Welcome back to part 7 of Password Cracking 101 plus 1. In the last video we looked at hybrid attacks and we attacked an NTLM v2 hash using a combination of a mask and a word list. We are now going to move on into looking at files or password protected files and how we can extract the hashes from those to crack them. Now there are several scripts um, that are shipped with uh, John the Ripper, specifically the John Jumbo um, branch, which will allow us to do this. Um, many of these come pre-built into Kali anyway, so there's no need to worry, but it's good to know that you know there is a, um, a list available, there is a, um, a collection available you can download should you need to. These contain a number of scripts which, as the names indicate on this slide, allow you to extract the hashes for a number of different uh, devices, software, whatever it might, whatever it happens to be. For example, SSH keys, SSH to John, PDF to John, surprise, surprise, hashes from a PDF and things. Now, although all of these are to John, they do produce Hashcat compatible hashes, so there's no, no problems there whatsoever. They're all found generally on Kali by default in the user share John or user SBIN folder. So depending on, of course, on, on what you've got, it'll be a case of identifying whether there is a script or a tool you can use to extract the hash for that. Okay, something to be aware of, when you do extract the hashes using these tools, you'll quite often find that the name um, of the file you're extracting from is placed in the username field of the hash. So, you can commonly sort of see people cracking, extracting a hash from a file, and then they go to crack it, and Hashcat says it's not working. And that's because in this example, for example, there's a key pass vault that we've called key pass vault, and it's placed it here before this first colon. Now the actual hash for this key pass vault starts here with this dollar, dollar key pass onwards. But, ha but um, the tool has taken the file name and placed it here in the username field. Now you could get around that by adding dash dash username to Hashcat. And that will tell Hashcat to expect a username in this field and process that. Otherwise you would need to remove whatever information is here before the first colon and then only pass the actual hash itself. Um, either via you know CLI or in a file, however you want to do it. You can check the expected format of what Hashcat is expecting by adding example hashes and then your hash mode of choice on the command line. Or alternatively, uh, you can go to the wiki and there's a nice list of every hash mode um, with an example hash in the format that Hashcat expects it. So it's always good to make and to sort of uh, you know check to make sure you're giving Hashcat exactly what it expects. Otherwise, it will complain. Okay, very short one this time, we're jumping straight into the next exercise then. Crack the hash at exercise 7 crackme.docx. Okay, so docx has hopefully given you uh, an indicator of what this is. Docx will be a word doc. So if we look for the uh, mode we want first of all, now there's a lot here that's going on. We're actually going to want this one, mode 9600, which is MS Office 2013. There's plenty of other options here that have different use cases, but we are going to be needing that, despite it being a modern a modern day uh, Office stock. We are going to be needing Hashcat mode 9600 when, when we get to it, of course. The first thing though we're going to do is uh, locate Office to John because that's we're going to need this to extract the hash and here we have it user share john office to john dot py so let me first of all just call that and point it into our exercises folder and say please extract the hash from our docx and you can see it's done it as mentioned earlier it's taken that uh, file name and it's placed it here in the username field so we're not gonna we're not gonna want that when we go to attack it okay I'll start this one off just because it might take a minute. But here is our attack stream then. So hashcat mode 9600. Here is our um, hash just starting from the dollar office that we've passed the standard in. We're going to give it a word list. And in this instance, we're also going to mangle it with some rules. We're going to give it best 64 rule just to see if we can enhance some of the, uh, the candidates that our top 100 gives us. Okay. One thing you'll very quickly notice if we look at the status of cracking anything in Office related is the speed. 73 hashes a second. That is unbearably painfully slow. Office files are not quick to crack. If you do have an encrypted Excel doc or Word doc or whatever it might be, uh, unless the password is relatively 
you know, guessable or easy, you might be giving up quicker than you think. Yes, of course, you know, you can always throw more hardware at it and things, but there are there are limits. It's not quick to attack um, Microsoft Office files. Luckily, in this case, though, we're in a, a training environment and this has been designed to make it crackable. And here we can see we've got the hash printed to the screen. After the last colon, we have a, a kind of like a, a broken keyboard walk, or it isn't broken, sorry, a full keyboard walk across the top of the keyboard with one, two, three at the end. And that's therefore now the password to open that Office doc, in this case, this Word doc. Okay? So, if we just jump back to the slide, we can see that there. Um, identify the file or the tool we need, sorry, to extract the hash from our file. If it's a, a Microsoft Office doc, we'll be using Office to John. If it was an SSH private key, for example, it'd be SSH to John, so on and so forth. Um, you've always got to identify whether you're able to get at the hash quickly or not. I highly recommend, you know, you look around places like the Hashcat forms and things uh, to see if anyone else has been looking for a way to extract a particular hash type. You might get lucky. Um, and then, yes, we have to do our Hashcat command, mode 9600. And in this case, we've just used a word list rule combination to crack that hash. Thanks very much, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back in the next video.